Well, welcome to Partners in Ministry. I'm your host, Dan Smith, and today I'll be talking with Ray Chobanian. Ray is the group leader for a program called Recovery Matters at Northway Christian Community Church in Wexford, Pennsylvania. Well, welcome, Ray, and thank you for joining me today. Ah, thanks, Dan. I'm grateful to be here. Thanks for having me. You bet. Hey, for those that may not be familiar with Recovery Matters, uh, could you give us just a brief description or history uh, of that program? Uh, Sure, absolutely. It was a program at the church I now attend um, that was running for some years. So I met my fiance. I just wanted to spend time with her. And she said, it was a Saturday night. She said, why don't you come to church service with me? And uh, so I did. And during that time there, she said, you know, I think they have a recovery program here. Um, and she, then she all, she just mentioned, she said, wouldn't that be something if you led that one day? And I said, hmm, I say, you know, planted the seed. And so that sent me on about an 18 or 19 month adventure of reviving the groups. I found out the group was, has, hadn't been going for quite some time uh, at that point. So I redid the whole curriculum. Uh, there was a lot of steps and things involved and uh, revived it. We started during COVID online on Zoom, like we're on now. You know, I had a few people show up, but then as things started to open up again, it kind of was dropping off and the plan was always to move it to an in-person group. So it is currently uh, just an in-person group. But um, And now in September, we'll be three years uh, meeting in person. It's been over three years altogether, but about three years in person here coming up September, 2024. So that's like the brief, you know, the brief history of it. Sure. Well, that's, that's two big landmarks. One is the third year anniversary for Recovery Matters. And the first one is uh, your wedding. So uh, yes, it's going to be, it's gonna be a, an important month. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, September, we're getting married and September is the anniversary for Recovery Matters. So yeah, pretty good month. Well, I'm anxious to be out there for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. So Likewise. Who are you? Ser- who are you serving today? I mean, where are the people coming from? Uh, that that sort of thing. So, um, a good bit of the people are from the church. Um, people that you know are struggling with some type of addiction, and they reach out to the church for help. Some of those people go to other groups or know other people who struggle with addiction of some sort. You know, with substances. Um, and so they'll invite them and say, hey, you know, I go to this group. It's really great. Uh, why don't you come and check it out? And so uh, we've had quite a bit of people come in and out, but we have a, a solid group that has stayed. And then as they run across people that they think will be interested, they they tell them. So it's really been word of mouth Um, the church has done a little bit of marketing to kind of help attract some people for that. Uh, and I know there's a much greater need in the church uh, for addiction recovery, you know, help. So that's kind of the gist of it. So, um, um, the goal is to grow this because I know there's more people that need it and they might not even be aware. So yeah, that's one of the things is to make people more aware of it. Yeah. About how many people do you average on a, on a day? Uh, like 10, it, we've had as many as 20. So it's a smaller group. It's more intimate. Started with one, started with one person for, for a while, actually, if at least a few months. Um, and so that was, that was interesting because I had planned my curriculum and everything the way I was leading the group. So having one and then two and then three, it, it caused me to have to adapt, um, which is great. I think that was a really good learning experience for me. A trial run, so to say. It, it helped me to get my feet wet. And God really knows what he's doing, um, I'll tell you, because in my mind, it's like there has to be a, a bunch of people here and, and he sends one, you know? So I think that was a good test and trial, but but yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Uh, sometimes um, big can be more problems than it's, than it's actually worth and, and staying small and intimate. And having a close knit community can be a really important thing. Absolutely, and it is. It is that community part is um, very vital to uh, per people in recovery and their success. So the community is everything. So yes, I, I agree with you. As as it grows and gets bigger, there will be new challenges and and things like that to overcome. So you're 
Yeah, I, I know I, I've heard other people that have gone through recovery processes and, and actually, you know, all of us are the same thing. I'm a recovering sinner. Um, mm. And the sanctification process takes us away from isolation and towards community. And, and the more that I leave that isolation behind and engage in the community of the church, the, the fuller I feel, the, the more refreshed I, I am, the, uh, the, the healthier I am, the better my decision making process makes. And it's no different with the program that, that, uh, that you're doing there. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Give us an idea of the transformation that you can kind of see that's going through these folks. A picture of what life may be look like or feeling when someone just begins to enter the program and then they've been through it for a couple months, maybe a year. Uh, what does life look like uh, at that point? Yeah, so that's a really great question, Dan. Um, and, and it's very interesting, the things I've learned regarding the answer to that question. So initially, um, most people that come in are either still struggling, meaning like they're act in active addiction, they're still drinking or drugging or whatever they do in that. Um, and so, you know, self-esteem is low, self-confidence is low. Um, they feel hopeless. Like, like uh, I've had some people tell me that this was like their last stop before they completely gave up on themselves. And um, so it's, it's like that, you know, it's pretty bad. You know, they're, they're, family life isn't in in a good place um they're struggling to keep maintain their job uh it's just like uh, spiritually like their relationship with god isn't isn't good if if they even have one um and they they have you know they have this paradigm that you know the church is no good and and god doesn't like them and things so we go from that it's hard to say but you know over the course of a year you can make a lot of progress if you're serious about your recovery. So, um, like the first lady that came, it was just me and her for a while. Uh, she's actually now become a group leader. So she is a co-leader now for at recovery matters. So she, she was the first one there it really change. And, and it, it doesn't just impact them. It impacts their children, their families, their, where they work, because when they are better, everything around them can get better and they can help other people. Now they're in a position to pour out, you know, when your cup's empty, there's, there's nothing to pour out into others. So you have to take care of yourself first. And then once you get that going, uh, you can start to help other. So, so it's a, you know, it's, it's a trickle down effect or a snowball effect, however you want to look at it. Um, and I'm telling you, a lot of people will wait until they're comfortable, but they'll, they'll tell me things like a year or two later, um, about where they were at when they first came, like things they just didn't mention to anybody. And, uh, and that was one of them is that, um, this, this particular person who is now a co-leader, the first lady there, she had told me that she said, you know, I've tried many things and I just couldn't get it. Nothing was working. And when I came to that first meeting, by the end of it, I knew that you, Ray, were the one to help me with this. And it, it gave me a renewed sense of hope. She said, if, if it wasn't for that, if this meeting didn't go well, then I was just going to completely give up and say, forget about it. And it's like, well, and I've had several people tell me similar things to that. Um, or, you know, they were in a really dark place and they came to that first meeting and, you know, you start to see them like kind of ease up and, and you could tell when the stress and the anxiety, the guilt and the shame and the pain starts to leave them. There's like their hope is back. And it's like, wow, all these people were doing it. Um, so why can't I, you know, I, I think a lot of people say that to themselves, like, well, if you guys are doing it, well, I can too. Um, so the change is dramatic. And, um, it, 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 that's an understatement. I mean, it's, it's like night and day in these people. And I know from my own personal, you know, story with addiction and recovery, I mean, the change, you wouldn't recognize me, you know, I'm not, not the same person at all. So, so yeah, the changes are um, amazing. I just, I praise God for all he does in our lives um, to help us to overcome addiction, stay sober and to grow ultimately and grow closer to him. So, the relationships with God are being restored. Um, people that, you know, had once said that, you know, they're, they don't either, they don't really believe in God anymore, or they just think that God has a vendetta out for them. Now they're 
telling other people about God and, and sharing scriptures and their prayer life is restored and, and they have a, a restored um, relationship with, with God and Jesus Christ. So it's been, it's that, that's the payoff really. That's, that's the blessing. When you see those kind of things happening, um, you're, you're literally changing the world, you know, one, one person at a time. So yeah, it's been amazing. Yeah. It's got to be tremendously rewarding. It, yeah. It's the most rewarding work, um, for, in my perspective that, that there is, I mean, when you really help change a person, a person's life, um, and that it impacts their family and their neighbor, the communities, their work, you know, it's, it's super rewarding. It really is. One of the elements that you use in your Recovery Matters program goes by the acronym of HOW, H-O-W. And I believe the H stands for honesty, the O for open-mindedness, and the W for willingness. Why don't you just take us through the importance of each one of these uh, for a minute and so we can have a better understanding of, of what's going on here. So let's start with honesty. What does it mean or what do you mean when you say honesty and why is it important in the recovery process? Sure. Yeah. So... The HOW, the how of the program, is actually something from traditional recovery like NA, Narcotics Anonymous, or AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. That's something I learned there because I was in, I was a member of NA for quite a while. And uh, I think it's a really powerful concept because a lot of people want to know right away, how does this work? And, and so it's a great, it's a great acronym. So honesty, first and foremost... It's about being honest with yourself. Um, and when you start, so it's, you know, we can maybe have a, I, an inkling that, that something's not right or I, I drink too much or I, I smoke too much or whatever it is, but it's easy to look at, you know, the homeless junkie on the street and say, oh, well, I'm not as bad as that guy and uh, justify or rationalize what we're doing. So you're literally living in a state of denial and, and in a lie um, to yourself. And it may take some, uh, some people longer to realize that than others, but the fact of the matter is still that um, they're still in a denial state or a lie. They haven't had the awareness yet. So being honest, it usually starts with saying, okay, I, I have a problem and my life is unmanageable and, uh, and I can't, I can't use this stuff anymore. It's, it's destroying me. And that usually occurs within a person. They don't typically say that out loud right away. Some do. It depends. It's a, you know, not everybody's the same, but without the honesty, you can't really move forward. And I, I liken it to a GPS, you know, if in order for a GPS to get you from point A to point B, it has to know exactly where point A is. And our recovery is the same thing. Like if we don't acknowledge where we're at, we can't get to our desired destination. We have to first acknowledge that. And that takes honesty. So, and then that honesty, hopefully, and it, and it should build over time and you become more and more honest. And then that honesty should, should penetrate all areas of your life, everything that you do, you know, and, and having integrity uh, what you do when no one's looking, you know, so the honesty part is huge. Um, and further down the line in recovery, when maybe you're struggling with things, but you're trained in honesty uh, and you, you just talk about it, say, Hey, I got this situation going on. I, you know, I feel like I want to use again. I want to drink. I want to get high. I have these, you know, temptations. And, and so then we can help people and say, yeah, you know what? That's normal. You're not alone in that. And, and here's how we deal with that. And so, but if you keep it all in and you're never honest about it, you're, yeah, the secrets keep you sick. You're going to stay sick. And addiction, uh, the enemy, Satan, it wants us isolated. And addiction is a really powerful isolator um, because it's like you just want to be left alone to do your thing and you don't want to bother anyone or be around people. Um, so yeah, that honesty is, is super powerful and it's, it's an absolute necessity. I mean, I don't, I don't think you can move forward without being honest with yourself and saying, I have a problem, you know? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So uh, honesty really deals a lot with, uh, my understanding of myself then, um, to, uh, not play it down too much. So that I'm, I'm lightening the, oh, what the effects are of the addiction I have and also not overplaying it so that I'm 
punishing myself or abusing myself uh, by by being too far down, but having a good solid view of who I am and where I am so that I can I can move forward. Correct. Yeah. Just like stating the problem for what it is, you know, and mm-hmm. you know, just it's like if you have a math equation without without the numbers in it, it's it's unsolvable. So yeah, it's it's about um just kind of playing that out and you might have to do it in your head a hundred times before you have the courage to say it out loud to other people, but that's okay. I mean, it's a process. And I think that's another good point is to say it's, it's a process, you know, you don't become addicted in one day and you don't recover in one day. So you got to kind of be easy on yourself through the process, but, but disciplined. Okay. Great. So the next letter in the acronym of how is O for open-mindedness. Uh, talk to us a little bit about how open-mindedness both can um, help in the recovery process and if we're not open-minded, how it can uh, impede the recovery process. Yes. So basically when we say open-mindedness, we mean, so if there's a new idea presented to you that you've never heard before uh, and you just automatically laugh it off or kind of scoff at it or think that's ridiculous. That won't help me. That's not what I'm looking for. That's, that's closed mindedness. That's the opposite. So being open-minded is when a new idea is presented to you, actually entertaining that idea and, and saying, okay, can this help me and change my results in any way? And you got to test that. So having open-mindedness, it's like, okay, I will hear things, even if I don't believe in it, even if I don't think it's uh, right, uh, like like true is what I mean, even if I don't, don't think it's true or I don't believe in it or I think it's crazy, let me at least hear this person out and and hear about it and hopefully the goal is to apply open-mindedness so that you can accept new ideas. Because if we, the the whole point is the addiction's slowly killing us. We want to change. So if we want something we've never had, we've got to do something we've never done. And being open-minded is, if you don't have that, I mean, how, how are you ever going to accept the new idea or even entertain it? If you're just, you automatically just shut everything down and say, no, not for me. And it was our best thinking that got us in that situation to begin with. So it's not very wise to say, I know best. I, you, you come to a group um, and then just shut everything down as being said to you. It's like, well, why did you even come? Did you think it was, we we're going to tell you, you know, how to get high better or how you can successfully use, you know? So it's like all new ideas. So you have to be open to that. And it, they don't all make sense at first. They do after time, but at first they don't, they do not all make sense. Yeah. So, so I think that kind of covers how, how important it is and how it can also impede us. It can, without an open mind, we can, we'll stay where we're at. We'll be, we'll stay sick, you know? So I think that's it on that one. That's awesome. Yeah. So the third letter in the acronym, a W stands for willingness. Uh, how is willingness an important part of recovery? And and if it's not there, how can it impede uh, the, uh, the the growth? Yes. So they all go they all go hand in hand. If if you haven't seen that already, so the willingness is the the willingness to change, the willingness to listen, the willingness to try something different, um, despite being scared or unsure or doubtful or fearful. You know, uh, the willingness. It's like if, if a new idea is presented to you, you could be open-minded about it and listen to it and say, hmm, that's interesting. I'll toss that around in my mind. But the willingness comes in for action. And I think that's the most important thing with willingness is in recovery, it's, it's linked to action and maybe just in life in general. But so if you're not willing, open-mindedness is great, but if you don't have the willingness to try or apply the suggestions that are given you're you you might know a lot but you're going to stay the same you know so you have to have that willingness i mean even coming to a group like this for the first time is very scary for for people it's it's nerve-wracking 
Um, you know, it's, there's a lot of fear there. You feel like nobody's going to understand you or where you've been or the things you feel or have, or go through. And yeah, you just have this skewed view of the world. So it takes a lot of willingness to a get there and then B participate and then C actually, um, try some of those suggestions in your own life. So without the willingness, I mean, I don't know how far you could get without it. Not, not very far without that willingness. So right. that's, yeah. Well, I can have my mindset changed by being honest with myself. Uh, I can be willing, I can uh, be receptive to different concepts and different ideas, but if I'm not willing to take action, um, what's the point? Right. Right. Just wasting your time then for the yeah. most part. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ray, this has really been awesome. If there's somebody that's watching this video and they'd either like to learn more about what you're doing or if they'd like to join the ministry by supporting it, uh, what are some ways that they can get involved in what you're doing? Yeah, so um, the first and, and most important way is if you happen to be around or close to the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area is to come to the group on Monday nights at 7 p.m. It's every Monday, 7 p.m., unless it falls on a holiday. Um, so that would be number one. I realize everybody watching this probably won't be around that area, but some might. You never know who could see this. So sure. it's in Wexford, Pennsylvania, um, 7 p.m. at Northway Christian Community Church. So it's pretty easy to find. Um, so that's one. Um, number two, and we're, uh, by the way, we're always looking for speakers for the group as well. Every month we have a speaker, that, a guest speaker that comes in. They have to have at least a year clean and sober and be actively working on their recovery. And they come in and, and share their story. Um, we have done some on Zoom too. Like we'll meet there at the church and then have someone on, on Zoom virtual tune in. So we can do that. So that would be a, a great thing if someone could, you know, offer support in that way. Uh, and how I usually do that is I would meet with the person first, uh, hear, hear their story a bit, you know, get to know them a little bit and then say, okay, great. And then would you like to, you know, speak for us at the end of the month? So uh, the third way is they can also make a donation and it, we'll have a link. It's a jot form, a uh, custom form I built to accept, you know, pretty much, I mean, even crypto, we can even take crypto donations. So I prefer cash, but crypto works fine too. So that we can put in the description, the, the link to that page and it is secure. Um, it goes through Stripe. Um, and yeah. And so that's a secure thing. It's, it's legitimate. Um, yeah, those would be the ways. And then the, I guess the final way would just be to spread the word. If you know somebody who struggles with addiction, uh, you know, keep us in mind. And there's also an online Facebook page called Raise Recovery, R-A-I-S-E, Raise Recovery. So there is a page and also a private group. So you could also reach out to me there. And um, that is there to help people all over the world with, you know, their addiction and, and recovery process. So that's a way to easily kind of get in touch and learn some more, see some additional content. You know, if maybe you're not at the point right now where you can muster the courage to get to a meeting. Well, you know, tune on there and, and start watching the content. There's also a YouTube channel, Raise Recovery, um, where we do uh, it's a podcast, basically. So we put content out on there, people's stories, all kinds of stuff about recovery and addiction. So um, even like tips and stuff on withdrawal, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. So that's another thing people can use. And it, and that does support us because the views and everything, it, it, it helps. So yeah, those are like four ways you could support us. Well, that's great. Well, thanks, Ray. I really appreciate your time today. Oh, it's been a blessing and a pleasure, Dan. Thank you. If you got any questions or if you'd like to learn more about uh, Recovery Matters, you can see Ray's contact information here on the screen. You can also find it in the show notes for this episode on our website or in the description of this YouTube video. Like we mentioned before, if you'd like to support Recovery Matters financially, there are links to do so both in our show notes as well as in the description of this YouTube video. So on behalf of Recovery Matters, Rachel Banian and 
um, Partners in Ministry. I want to thank you for joining us. And until next time, let's get out there and serve as Christ serves.